Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Catholic Table Talk Podcast, where everything Catholic is on the table. I'm your host, William Sauber. Today, we'll have a special guest with us today. Before we get to that, though, thank you everyone for listening and watching on YouTube and Facebook, liking, subscribing, and sharing Catholic Table Talk Podcast. Really appreciate that. Thank you for your wonderful feedback as well. Also, if you have a show request or a speaker request, please feel free to message me either in the comments below on YouTube and Facebook or get a hold of me um, via email or text. Now, let's get to the guest. Um, I know him most of my life, really enjoy playing baseball with him, and he's really a great Catholic. I really appreciate, appreciate him coming on the show today. Um, it's Emmett Wickles. So uh, Emmett, thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me, Billy. I was actually super excited when he asked me last week to come on. I've, I've been looking into all the books that, I, that I've read. A couple of them I haven't read, but they came highly recommended to me online and they look incredibly interesting. And yeah, I also, I missed when we could do the religion stuff our senior year and all throughout our religious teaching in school. I missed those times. So it was really good that you talked to me. Yeah. Well, that's where I kind of picked this up on was back uh, um, for senior year for the religious part was you said something one time at one of our meetings and you said something like, I read like two books a week or something. Like and Monica, at, uh, the youth leader at the time, she said, I'll give you this book. I'll give you this book. And I remember the rest of us sitting at the table were like, that's pretty good, Emmett. So that's <laughs> why I... Uh, I uh, I picked this topic for you so yep yeah so. I do I do read quite a lot two when I was in high school two books a week was exactly what I did it's a little ambitious now with me working and stuff but I still do read quite a bit sure yeah so the topic of today um the overall topic is kind of like the top five or so catholic books that every catholic or everyone but especially every catholic should have so what did you find out? All right. So I, I got together five books. Of course, this is all subjective. Everybody likes their own kind of things. I know there's one that is definitely probably just a personal favorite. Um, I know my grandpa really likes it, but we're into the same stuff. But, you know, there is some that are definitely must haves. Right. And of course, the first is the Bible. Everybody should have a Bible. Everybody should read through parts of the Bible. I think when we were going through our... Um, our confirmation training, they gave us a couple books to read, which is Psalms, Matthew, right? Matthew, yep. And one other thing I can't remember. And um, so I just thought, of course, you have to throw in the Bible. But something that I wanted to point out that our religion coordinator, Monica, always told us was to have an extra Bible. And I actually have my personal one. So most people have a Bible that they, you know, keep around and use. But I actually also have a personal one that I read that has highlights in it. Because of course, this Bible is your own, your own property. It is right. not a, it is not a, it is a sacred text, but it's not like a relic that you have to worry about messing up. You can buy a lot of Bibles. And so it's always good to have one that you can highlight, that you can underline, put questions mark on to find things that really are intriguing to you that you have questions on. I know I have some question marks in there somewhere about things I didn't understand that I go and ask somebody about that might be more knowledgeable than me, whether that be a priest. Uh, at the time, Monica was a great help. Our deacon, right. Deacon Bob, I could talk to him at school. He was also our Eng my English teacher. Sure. Um, so I always thought it was a nice thing to have a second Bible or some people do a study Bible. It works great for a lot of people. I think that's a great thing to have, especially if you're younger. It gives a great format for you to right. uh, follow. Um, you'd want me to go a little bit on price and stuff. Um, you know, Bibles are incredibly variable in price. You could buy one for five bucks. You can get one from free from your grandparents, I'm betting. Or you could buy a, a couple hundred dollar Bible from somewhere, I bet. Wait. Right. And yeah, you, you could get one for um, your first communion. You could get one mm -hmm. for confirmation. Um, even graduation, you probably could get one. So, yep. But the second, oh, sorry, yep. go ahead. Go ahead. Um, 
before just for a couple of Bibles, um, totally agree, agree with you because I had the uh, new American Bible, I believe. Mm -hmm. That's and what then, I have as well. Yeah. And then I got um, the Great Retro Bible. That's my own personal Bible. So truly, I agree with you that you should have about two or three of them and then make one or two that like your personal. Yep. And, so. you know, it's not bad to have a couple different variations. You know, there's the New American. There's a lot of different ones. And um, it all stays basically the same. But there's just a couple things that change with how they word it. And you might find that you like one way better. So right. it's not never bad to try the different kinds. No, it's not. So the second one I put in there, which is the catechism of the Catholic church. A lot of people just say the catechism, which is fine. Uh, I actually was looking into the word catechism and it's actually a Greek word, which is a tool for teaching important information using question and answer format. So that's why when you look up, you'll have to put catechism of the Catholic church because a catechism is a very broad general term. Okay. Um, for those who don't know the catechism, um, we use it for all, all ages. Um, I know we went through it kind of through video format with, um, in our confirmation class. Yep. Um, it is, uh, it's used by the Catholic church in our context for um, teaching its basic doctrines. Like who is God? Who is Jesus? Why did God do this things? You were created by God, stuff like that. Just really basic stuff. Um, it can be done very cheap as again, but you can also, find it very expensive like most things right. um that's a good one and i also kind of wanted to throw in there with it if you're getting ambitious to really dive deep in is the code of canon law of the catholic mm. church which yep. uh goes more into its practices that you can do instead of just basic doctrines right yeah and also for um catechism the canon that's where to go for like uh, if someone a Protestant comes to you and asks you a question, mm -hmm. um, like Father Gabriel, he uh, he's been on the show, um, he took a couple of paragraphs from there, so that's where it's basically like a Catholic apologetic book, kind mm -hmm. of. exactly. That's, that's where you gotta go to it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's what people use when they're converting to the to the faith from other faiths. They use the catechism. That's exactly. they're that's why they're called catechists. Exactly, the people who yep. teach it. So the next book I put is God and the Foxhole. This was given to me by my grandfather. It is an excellent book. Very interesting. It is about, um, it's a book filled with inspiring and true war stories um, about miracles on the battlefield. Um, there's some in here that are very widely known. I'm sure you know, um, Sergeant, uh, or not Sergeant, Private Doss from Hacksaw yep. Ridge, the movie an incredibly well-known one that is included in here with some great context that you don't get from the movie because of course movies leave a lot of things out right um but it also has plenty of other ones like one of my favorite uh subjects on it because there is different subjects like brotherhood and other things but one of my favorite ones was chaplains because it was i actually have one pulled up it was about an army chaplain dilbert Kuel um in world war ii um I won't read the thing word for word, but to summarize it, it was just a slender boyish guy who enlisted in the paratroopers. And in World War II, that is an incredibly tough group of people because they have the most dangerous line of work because the planes back then, not the greatest. No. It's not like today. No. And um, so he went to his military base in Georgia and had high hopes because there is a couple, uh, what, what did it say? How many people there were? 1,800 people, 1,800 paratroopers in his company that he was supposed to preach to. So his first day of chapel, he got there early, set everything up, made sure there's plenty of missiles and stuff in the pews, uh, said his prayers, got his nerves out. And when he went out to teach or to preach mass, two people showed up and one was staggeringly drunk in quotes. Um, he was pretty devastated. You know, because this is a hard group to get at. And him was, in fact, he was, in fact, a convert. Um, he was not very, well, he, actually, he was a Minnesotan who grew up in the Great Depression, was poor, 
and went was going to go to the University of Minnesota and decided to never be poor again. Well, he was very thought religion was just for stupid superstition and stupid people. <laughs> but he was confused when his in, incredibly intelligent neighbor who was an electrician uh, was also a Catholic. How could this person balance superstition and intelligence or science and religion? And so the guy told him that he needs to be, he needs to find God. He needs to become a Catholic. And he goes and secretly reads the Bible because he doesn't want his family to know that he might be looking into this. Sure. So he changes his plans. He goes to become a priest, becomes a priest and lists in the army and is uh, assigned to the paratroopers, actually volunteered for the paratroopers. Um, and of course, getting back to the time, two people at his thing, and he prays to God, God, help me, how am I supposed to preach to these people? And God sends, sends him back a message, if, you, if they won't come to you, you go to them. And so that is what he did. He went to preach to those people and stuck with his men. He would go and participate in war games. Um, he made countless jumps. Um, he, was, he was christened from their people, in quotations, the battling padre of the, four, of the 404th. So this was the fighting chaplain. He, he went and he sought out people, which is a great example to follow and there's plenty of other examples in this book likes private dos like these chaplains who are uh listed that are absolutely amazing stories to read they go by super fast you could read one a day two a day some of them are only three pages like the one i just looked at some of them might be 10 because they have more in-depth stories but it is an excellent excellent book to read yeah i think um i remember you saying that during uh confirmation and senior year that it was mm -hmm. a great book to read and yeah wow great yeah it's great especially stories. again that one's a little more personal preference i love war stories so that might not be in other people's top five and i completely understand that but if you are into things like war stories and all that this is an excellent book for you to read You'll enjoy it. You'll learn some great things. You'll be inspired and in just miraculous. All right. Sounds good. I'll put down my uh, birthday list then. <laughs> yes, you should. Right. Um, that one, you can find it for about $25 anywhere. Um, the next one I have, I haven't read this, but after reading some reviews, I am buying it instantly. It's called The Screw Tape Letters. You heard of it? Not off the I bat, hadn't no. heard of it either. Don't worry. So it is a fictional story written by a uh, non-Catholic, but written for uh, the Christian demographic. And it is based on a senior demon writing letters, teaching his nephew how to success successfully tempt his subject, who is a British male who they call the patient. Um, it's a book written to be very humorous, um, satirical. It's... I heard, again, I haven't read it, sadly, but I heard it's very easy read about what I say, 157 pages only, but it wow. covers the, um, the, the theological subjects of temptation, sin, and the resistance to both of those. And I've been told by the internet that it is short, easy, quite enjoyable to do, and I'm definitely going to give this thing a look because it looks um, the very one, just fun, a book that even if you are um, not a Catholic, would even be enjoyable to read. Um, and I think people should pick it up. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a good thing I put you on the job. <laughs> I, I did look into these. these. This one looked incredibly entertaining. The next one is one that probably a lot of people have heard. I hadn't heard it yet, but it is The Imitation of Christ. Um, it's by Thomas A. Kempis. It was written in way back when, in 1418 to 1427. And it is actually the most 
It is most likely the second most widely read Christian book behind the Bible, of course. It was printed, I think, in, I think it said 40 languages before the 1600s, which back then is crazy because they don't got the internet. It's basically just the printing press and whatever. Right. Um, so this one is pretty short as well, 200 pages, and it is broken up into four books. It's an incredible learning tool. People have say they put it by their bed stands because they can read it very quickly. Um, it's broken up into, again, the four books, helpful consoles of the spiritual life, directives for the interior life, um, on interior consolation, and on the blessed sacrament, which of course is um, Eucharist. He very much emphasizes using Eucharist and the body of Christ to uh, to give a perspective on how we should live. And right. of course, this is from way back when. So some people will say, oh, that doesn't apply to today and all of that. But it actually does. It is a it transcends decades, centuries, probably millennia. And it will be a great tool for you to read to become more close to God. Yeah, that's man. I got or a couple more books. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. There is, yeah, there's a lot of books out there. Like I looked at websites. There is, you know, I I just looked up top five and scrolled through a couple couple websites, but they've got top fifty six. They've got top forty. They've got top two hundred two hundred thirty six. Right. Top two hundred thirty six Catholic books that you should read. So there is plenty of books that are based around the Catholic and Christian beliefs that people can find. Right. They certainly are. So, wow. It's easy to find. Just to click away on the computer. And now we got Amazon stuff. You don't even got to go to a bookstore and hope they have it. You just get right. it sent right to your door. Can't get much easier than that. Oh, no. So, um... So is that it? Do you have any, any more? Um, that was it for what I looked at. Um, okay. Of course, books aren't everything. Again, talking to, like Billy said, he had um, our father, Gabriel, one of our priests, talking to people like that, your grandparents who might be uh, practicing Catholics, your parents. They are just as good or even better as books sometimes because they can relate personally exactly to you. A book is a little more uh away it's a little more separated from you but it's still good to get other people's perspectives right so um just a couple i guess other questions mm -hmm. here For sure. um so do you have any other catholic books um besides those five that yeah you really enjoy well i really enjoy you know those pamphlets we got yep from so the things like how to pray um, how to be a good uh, male Catholic, a good woman Catholic. I didn't read that one. But uh, those short things were really great to read because they're quick, they're informative. Um, they're just very good learning tools for any people of all ages. Um, the best thing about them is that you can do them and maybe you can finish them in two, three hours, depending on how fast or slow you read, how much time you have. And you can give them to other people. That's not a big book that somebody else probably won't want. Um, like at our church, you could take it, you could return it. There was things like how to pray. That one I read twice or three times because it was very great. Good stuff to learn in there. Um, other ones, I like, well, again, I like reading the Bible. It's a great thing. And you can get smaller versions that are great to take anywhere i've got i've usually i actually do have a new testament uh book in my car just one of the little small pocket books and it's great to go if you get bored if you get inspired it's a great thing to just have along to read right yeah it is and um i'll just show you one of my favorite books here um i just started reading it actually uh last year mm -hmm. um it's called this all the way 
history, a history of the church and 100 objects. So it, oh. it brings you from all the way from um, when Jesus Christ founded the Catholic Church all the way down to like 2000 and all the different saints and objects that make the Catholic Church um, what people think of it. Um, like, uh, what was my favorite one in here? Just from um, like the Holy Grail, that was mm -hmm. a good one. And then uh, St. Francis Assisi's uh, tunic that he wore a lot, that was another one. So stuff like that, um, I really recommend that book as well because like I said, it brings you all the way up from when the church started all the way to about 2000. Yeah, it sounds right up my alley because it's I'm a big history buff. Um, stuff like relics and stuff interest me and that's a great thing that you brought up was that there's always a book that can interest you i know a lot of people don't like reading because when they're in school they were forced to do it and they were forced to read these terrible books that nobody likes um there's always something that you can find interesting right. you know all you have to do is look at what do i like my brother my younger brother loves sports he reads sports books doesn't do it too often but he does read sports books occasionally and he loves it. Me, I read a lot of different kinds of books because I like a lot of different kinds of subjects. So right. there's always something that you can find in a book that you enjoy. Don't just write books off because in high school you hated it because you had to do AR points or whatever. Because I'll admit, I hated it and I love right. to read. Right. And I'm one of those guys who uh, I don't really like to read that much, um, besides mm -hmm. if it's a sports. Um, page in the paper or um, if someone we know that's in the paper from uh, different you know lo mm -hmm. local sports yeah. or um, Catholic books and for that one is like the same thing it's like only a page or two for each object so it's only about 200 pages if that mm -hmm. so it's real short but it has a lot of information and lots of good stuff in it yeah, the best things are the ones that you can take by increments because I know it's daunting. I've read books that are over a thousand pages long and it can get daunting. But if, you, if you're one of the people who want to get back into reading but don't know how, take it a chapter at a time. Right. You know, I read one chapter a night. If you get real into it, read two or three a night. Um, it's not something that you have to force yourself to read so much if you read a chapter a night for most books you'll get done in maybe a, a month maybe a month and a half depending on how many chapters they have how small the chapters are but it can go by really quick as long as you just set that pace for yourself right that's exactly right mm -hmm. so do you have anything else um last thoughts or book suggestions or anything uh, last thoughts it's just always like um monica said at when we were doing catholic uh or not catholic our uh, confirmation class even though you're in confirmation and for a lot of people it is the end because their parents kind of forced them to go through this but it's never too late to keep learning right. it's always a good time to improve yourself keep reading whether it's online physical books which is something we didn't bring up was online stuff um ebooks audiobooks those are great resources for people who don't like to read or who like who travel a lot my dad travels a lot he has a lot of cds uh he, he's read the harry Bot potter books like two or three times just listening to them right. and that can be a very interesting thing for some people um and it's a great way i'm sure there's audiobooks of most of these things that we brought up right and i would um Going off of that, I would direct people to Catholic.com. They got a lot of great free ebooks um, you can just download. Also, we have it radio. They got lots of good ebooks, but also they got free books that you can sign up and get. Um, I'm I just got one and I'm getting another free book from Revit Radio. So like the page on Facebook and you get free books out of it. So well, That's very nice. Yeah, that'd be something I like because I'm a I'm a collector of books. So sure. But some people are real into the ebooks and audiobooks, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I think it's great as long as you're getting that information. Right. And like you said, your dad, um, he travels a lot, so mm -hmm. it helps him. And I think just 
even people at a desk all day. Um, if you have free time, you just unclick from your business account or whatever and you just click on your ebook. Yep, it's great for people who are real busy, especially ebooks and audiobooks, because they're always available. Audiobooks are something that you can do while driving. I don't recommend reading a physical book while driving. It's incredibly dangerous. Yeah. Um, but it's a great way for people who tell who seem to not have the time to fit that uh, to fit that in. Right. Sure thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that concludes um, the episode today. So thanks again, Emmett, for coming on. Hey, if you're willing, we'll have you on the show again. Oh, yeah, I'd love to, man. This this was very enjoyable. Like I said, I've been looking forward to it. Uh, it's great talking to you again. Great talking about uh, the faith again. I just, this is stuff that I love. It's where I kind of feel God and other people and talking about it. So it was great that you invited me. Thank you very much. Well, like I said, thanks for coming on. And that's Emmett Wicko, is everyone? A friend of mine? Hey, Check out the books that Emmett said. Check out the 101, uh, 100 Objects one. We'll try to get the links up at, on YouTube and Facebook after the show. But until next time, I'm William Sauber. We'll see you next time at the table at Catholic Table Talk Podcast, where everything Catholic is always on the table. <laughs>